today I want to bring you guys a video revisiting a video Ben Awad posted three years ago, the problem with live streaming. I'm going to link a video to this in the description below. I think Ben actually does a good job of uh, breaking down the video, but that's not really the purpose of this video. It's not me poking holes at his flaws, but it's mostly looking at how the concept of tech streaming has changed. So Ben Awad's video can be broken down in these three problems, problem one, two, and three. Two and three are more properly defined and we can break those in. So one thing that Ben Awad says is that there's a lack of viewership in programming. If you look at the coding section of Twitch, you'll notice that the viewership is very low. The most popular streamers are at anywhere between 100 to 400 viewers. Obviously, back in 2020, yeah, the viewership was way less. And overall, I want to say that even now, the programming category does not get as many views as, you know, obviously the gaming categories, maybe some other popular categories on Twitch. But what do you expect? Programming is very niche, especially live streaming programming. You're never going to be at the level as most gamers. We have clearly seen that grow exponentially. We now have people like the Pirate Software, people like Primogen, people like Theo, and many others that I may have missed, Lana Lux, that are easily breaking those values. The Pirate Software gets 10,000 views per stream. Primogen gets anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000, and many more getting somewhere in the 500s, which if you think about 500 people watching you program or talk about program live is an incredible number, and it showcases the growth of the category as a whole. So I think lack of viewership isn't really a strong argument even if we didn't grow as much as we did because it's just a niche category and if you want to live program you should do it but then he talks about two really good points about conflict of purpose and can't get into the flow state conflict of purpose one is something i've talked about over at a panel i did at twitchcon where it's focusing the project or entertainment. Now, the way I like to view Twitch streamers who are programmers is you basically have to break yourself down into one of three silos. You have the core building uh, programmer who focuses just on building the project, doesn't really interact too much, sometimes even have their webcam off. Second silo is you have people who are educational, who are focused on maybe not so much coding, but talking about things, teaching things, breaking new concepts or breaking news. A good example of this is Theo. Theo always breaks down things that are happening in the world of tech, especially web dev. And the last category, category is the entertainment category. And the Primogen is one of the best examples of that. He does, you know, educational content and programming content, but he is an entertaining individual. So the way I like to view this is you kind of have to pick where your purpose is on Twitch. If you're a programmer, you can't just go live and program and think you're either going to have a super efficient day, but then you're going to get lost in get in chat or lost in interacting with someone because they do conflicts. If you set yourself as you want to be an entertaining programmer or an educational programmer, or just a builder programmer, then you can focus on that purpose and you can explore each one. And the second thing is can't get into flow state. This kind of follows into that first one where, you know, if you do want to focus on coding, but someone comes into your chat says, Hey, I have a question. And they come into your stream asking, is Angular React, is Angular React better? Then yeah, obviously you can lose your train of thought and not get into that flow state to be as productive. But again, I go back to the purpose of pick which category, which silo you want to belong to. Uh, problem two that Ben addresses watching someone live stream code is an inefficient way to learn to code. Now, this is one that I actually disagree with entirely. I think we have seen creators like Leon, who was able to literally create a boot camp, a school to teach developers, a hundred code, hundred devs developer on how to be a good programmer. I don't think watching someone live stream is an inefficient way. I think it's the most realistic way to learn how to code because there's so much content, a video playlist that teach you how to do something from step A to Z. And all they have to do is kind of, you know, look at what they code and copy and paste it. But it's really raw. There's something about it where you see a developer struggle on a problem that could be obvious to you or could be super niche and granular and seeing their thought process live. That's super beneficial to your learnings as a developer. No one just writes scripts of code, runs it, compiles it, and it runs first off the bat. There's a thinking process. There's a write something and then you really did it wrong and delete all the code you wrote. And you may think that was a waste of 20 minutes, but then the next lines of code you write are extremely efficient. TJ is a great example of someone who can write large masses, lines of code while also also interacting with chat, but you can see his thinking process every time he wants to implement something. You are part of the thinking process. Watching someone live stream is a different way to how programming happens in the real world. A lot of people have this thing that you put on a hoodie, put on some sunglasses, sip some coffee, and you're just running these scripts and look like a hacker. But really, it's not like that. You're kind of just isolated, looking at stack trace, have tons of tabs open. So I definitely disagree with Ben. And the third problem he states is that it's hard to follow along on what they're coding or the project status if you just 
jump in, which is kind of related to problem number three and is the main thing that kills live coding. And that's, it's very hard to follow along with what they are coding, especially if you are new to the programming language they are using, or if you're just new to the stream. When I open up a stream of someone playing Fortnite, I know right away, what they're doing. So Ben's point here is that he compares, again, a game to programming. And I agree as someone who's been streaming for a while, it is challenging when you have so many people come in and you, you know, run a demo of your code, explain it, but then another batch of people come in either from a raid or you just pop off and you have to re-explain something. A code base has so many different layers, so many different files, so many different components. They may not fully grasp what that individual is trying to write, but comparing it to a game or something else. I mean, if you think about another example, if you jump into a podcast, midway through and you don't have the context of the topic, you're kind of just jumping into a conversation, not knowing what they're talking about and not knowing where you can contribute or what to even think of it. So I think that example is only strong when you look at something like a game. I don't think this is an exclusive problem to programming. I think it is a problem for things that are not gaming that are live streamed. So overall, my closing thoughts on, I think Ben made a good video. I think in 2020, some of the points he had were very strong, but I want to highlight the growth of category has never been more obvious. 2021, 2022, 2023 have been exceptional years for the category to boom. And I truly think now is one of the best times to get into program because you have these giant creators who bring such a large audience that when they go offline, they may still stick around to Twitch and may explore different creators on the recommended page in the programming category. And another thing that Ben didn't talk about is as a person live streaming, you can actually learn a lot from your chat. There might be someone more experienced in chat who can help them, guide them, give them a hint. And I truly think live streaming is a great way to get better as a programmer, get better as a content creator. And overall, it's fun. It's a great way to just meet new people and be into a community. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Do you agree with me or do you agree with Ben? And as always, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more. But I gotta leave you off with one thing. You gotta power it.